Uh, revision for exercise 10A to 10C. Hopefully you guys have already done this stuff, but very quickly going through those key content points there. Uh, we have the equation of tangent. Supposing that you have given a, for example, specific coordinate. Uh, all you have to do is find the coordinate, or you have to substitute an x or y value, depending on what you have to do, in order to determine the coordinate, and then use the derivative of that and use a formula right here in order to find the equation of tangent. It's the same as what you've done with the y equals mx plus c, just in a slightly different format. Except instead of using our m value, you're going to use a derivative of that value, of all that function, sorry, at the specific x value. Pretty straightforward. You guys already know the gradient of a normal is, uh, technically speaking, it's m1 times by m2 equals to negative 1. Or in other words, you can use this equation right here to determine our second gradient. Uh, for average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change, of course, you have to know the difference. Uh, technically speaking, the average rate of change is exactly that, an average. So it's an average between two certain points in a graph. And while it can be pretty accurate, it's not always going to be pretty accurate. So the instantaneous rate of change gives us the rate of change at a specific coordinate. Hopefully you guys remember first principles and the way that it works as an average of two points where the x values get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Sorry, the x difference, sorry. Uh, of course, we've got the position. Hopefully, you guys remember the kinematics from last year as well. We've got position, which we can differentiate to give us velocity, which we can then differentiate again to give us acceleration. And inversely, of course, we can anti-differentiate to go from acceleration, velocity, to position. Okay? And finally, we've got a point on a curve, which we need to be able to define as a stationary point if the f dash of x equals to zero. Of course, it could be f dash of a. That's just a specific notation. So any coordinate where the, de the derivative is equal to zero is a stationary point, and we're going to be de determining what kind of stationary point it is in the next one. Uh, of course, same thing applies if the dy dx equals zero. Remember, just make sure you're consistent with your uh, type of notation. If the question is given to you as y equals to, then we use dy dx, and if it's given to you as f of x equals to, then we use f dash of x. If you can't be bothered <clears throat> trying to remember which one is which, just always write let y equal f of x. Then it doesn't matter whether you use dy dx or f dash x. Any questions? Awesome.